Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemus. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Rhoda and Guam start to dig out from under the debris of Typhoon Mawar. Also tonight, the Guam airport is closed and that is leaving Japanese tourists stranded here on Saipan. And officials plan to fly a military plane down to Rhoda over the weekend with helpful supplies. In sports, high school all-stars square off in an indoor volleyball showdown. Everyone can hit, who can set. Stay with us, we have these stories and more up next. by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the CNMI Department of Public Safety. Mickey D's McCrispy. Formerly known as the Crispy Chicken Sandwich, now has some respect on his name. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Real talk. The Spicy Crispy Chicken Sandwich should have been named Spicy McCrispy from Jump. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Today, Tidawami and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Friday, May 26, 2023. The island of Rhoda is now on the road to recovery. The mayor says they are taking it one day at a time as the island heals from a powerful storm. Despite winds of 140 miles per hour, the island of Rhoda is spared from any major infrastructure damage and injuries or fatalities to the people. First of all, we're just very happy to report that there are no, um, there are no injuries or major damages that have incurred to our people or to the facility, whether government, private or uh, personal. In a phone interview with Mayor Aubrey Hukug, one of their first priorities were to clear up the roadways. We were able to clear the road, road passageways to ensure that our residents have and our emergency responders can transport our people to the hospital. This was uh, and our primary roads have been cleared. Our uh, personnel are now focusing on secondary roads. The airport runway has been cleared as well, and Star Marianas has already resumed flights. 
so we're able to welcome any supplies or materials that can be uh, transported to Rota to assist with our recovery effort. According to Hawkook, preliminary assessments are complete and they will now be entering the villages to execute the individual assistance program under FEMA. Today we have um, we will be doing an orientation briefing to um, give an overview to the personnel that will be working as well as training them on how to properly um, execute and complete forms and uh, get the needed information, proper documentation that FEMA will need to any of our residents who have incurred any damages to their property. So we're taking this slowly. A video of water filling up the East Harbor Marina went viral since Typhoon Mawar hit the Marianas. Hukuk says there are no major damages done, but does advise community members to stay away from the water. Uh, there is, of course, advisories from the Coast Guard and from the National Weather Service that the water is still unsafe. So we humbly ask our people to please uh, not be exposed in the water for our boaters to just remain inland as the has been still reported. The water, the water is still unsafe for for, for Rhoda. Typhoon Mawar closed in on the Southern Marianas on Wednesday. Strong winds and heavy rain were at its highest during the afternoon until the evening. Hukuk says she was at the mayor's office during most of the duration of the storm. This was a very, um, a very powerful, uh, uh, of course, with the reports given of how strong the winds were. Um, we were here at the command center at the mayor's office. Uh, all throughout the um, typhoon, um, all throughout the typhoon, we were here. Uh, I was also making uh, stops, visiting the shelters, you know, just uh, uh, following up and checking in on the shelteries. Hukuk says they had about 32 individuals who sought shelter. But even after Ty Super Typhoon Mawar had left us, you could still feel the strong gust winds, you could still feel the heavy rain. And so we were just hoping that our people would take safety precautionary measures and and um, stay indoors throughout that time. And we're very glad that there weren't any reports of any injuries um, to our people. But it was a very uh, scary experience. Hukuk extends her appreciation to the leadership and federal partners who assisted in the storm preparations. Classes remain suspended until further notice on Rhoda, and government employees will report back to work next Tuesday. More tonight from Governor Palacios at a post-typhoon briefing held at the Emergency Operations Center. First order of business is getting some help to both Rhoda and Guam. The port on Rhoda can be tricky getting ships into and out of when seas are big. Most of the equipment to help Rhoda will likely go by air. With the mayor, uh, she's putting together the assessment of those needs. Uh, we're, we're, of course, FEMA is, is also in the planning team. And once those, those are put together, we'll be able to source them out. And, like again, the most critical part is the transport. Okay. We can get those 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 resources together, but we gotta also work with the transporting. Luckily, I'm hoping that uh, the special assistance for uh, Homeland Security uh, would come out with uh, some good news and. I know that the uh, the uh, admiral is already. I heard him talking about sending a C-130 here uh, to and then to Rhoda, uh, but they need to assess the runways to make sure that those those, those assets can land uh, safely. In the, the Guam Power Authority was out on the streets today. The distribution system has sustained some major damage, and Governor Palacios says that the CNMI will send what help they can. I don't want to make any assumptions as to what their needs are. I asked her and I offered our help and I asked her to give us a cue and in that regards where, where the needs are going to be. But I'm pretty sure that, that it's going to be in the power, the water system, the power system because they have a 
a fairly uh, substantial damage to their distribution system. Uh, as you all know, when when we got hit by Super War, and even Nankud and and you two uh, folks from Guam were were here for almost a year uh, with helping us with our power infrastructure. So, you know, it is it is uh, it is important also that uh, we reciprocate. Uh, even if uh, we have uh, bigger resources than we are, whatever. It's like just like the the because Ryan did. They sent three or four of their your best people, our people, to help. They have all the equipment that they need. So we, we don't, they don't need us to send our trucks, other trucks or whatnot, is the most likely going to sleep bodies. Travel to Japan is currently on hold, and Japanese tourists who came before the typhoon are stuck here without a lot of answers. The direct air service to Japan on United is scheduled to operate three times per week, but despite okay weather on Saipan and the Saipan airport being open, the Guam airport closure has United scrambling with airplanes spread out around the region and Japanese tourists are stuck here. United canceled the flight today and also canceled Sunday's flight. Jeju Tways and Asiana started flying in rescue flights last night to Saipan International to get stranded passengers back, but United has yet to do so and has not sent passengers back to Japan via the Korean carriers that are operating. This afternoon, United's website showed flights operating out of Saipan to Guam beginning on Monday. However, an airport employee called that scenario unlikely. Saipan's airport manager for United, Jennifer Sablon, was on the West Coast today and could not be reached for comment. First responders and equipment may be sent to Rota over the weekend. The CNMI has reached out to the Department of Defense to request for an aircraft that is able to deploy first responders and equipment down to Rota for the recovery phase of Typhoon Mawar. Either energize the system, uh, go and help with the well, the water, uh, testings. Uh, those are the things that we want to go forward first and uh, support the activity that's going to be there. Homeland Special Assistant Franklin Babauta says the first batch is comprised of personnel from several government agencies. Uh, we have one first from uh, the BACQ because we need to be in compliance with the, e you know, the EPA. We have the landfill. One of our priorities too is to make sure that we have the landfill ready and set uh, to go. So. Uh, BACQ Public Works is going to go there to assist them on making sure that we um, have a plan for the landfill. Um, we have um, the uh, CUC personnel that are going to go there to assess, help assess, and uh, you know, f fix the uh, facility and the uh, energy side of the uh, house. We have some personnel too from CHCC to be there should they, they need any further evaluations. Uh, any assistance that will be there. We are also looking at law enforcement um, to augment the law enforcement there, um, such as the personnel from DFEMS, the fire will be there to augment their um, personnel. So some of the personnel who too needs to go home and take care of their things so we can have our personnel go and cover down uh, while they are on um, their own uh, to also help uh, assist their family. Babauta says the C-130 is here and they hope to get the first flight out to Rota this weekend. We were actually have a one target uh, this afternoon, but that was changed due to some personnel have to, you know, from, the, from their crew site. Uh, and then they'll let us know. So we're looking at the first uh, flight will be by tomorrow morning. Yeah. Rota is re-energizing as quickly as possible. Utility officials may be on the next flight out. 
The Commonwealth Utilities Corporation is working around the clock to get services back on on Rhoda. Acting Executive Director Betty Terlahi says Rhoda experienced an island-wide power and water outage during Typhoon Mawar, but she says there has been significant progress. The water services was restored yesterday, just before 3 p.m. It took a while to pressurize the water system to get it down to the village. But by 5 o'clock, the Sinapalo residents were already receiving some water. And by the evening, the hospital was receiving water. And as of this morning, hospital said the, the water was, was great. Terlahi says CUC crew was able to hook up some power today as well. Earlier today, um, the crew were able, the power crew was able to um, get to the hospital sooner than, than anticipated, than predicted. And uh, they energized the hospital just before 11 o'clock. So um, that was, uh, you know, for us, that was really good news because the hospital, we know, um, had a small generator, limited gem generator size and wasn't carrying the whole hospital. So that it was the biggest update today. Um, just a few minutes ago, you saw me on the phone, we got good news. Um, feeder 2 was uh, turned on and right now they are at Teneto Beach and uh, they're working their way to the airport. According to Terlahi, the mission is to get CPA back on the grid. Of course, this is not including the laterals and so most of the residents are into the laterals, but once we get the primary completely up, then we would be able to now go in and work the laterals and get the residents all energized up. CUC is currently on standby as the scene of my homeland is arranging the flights out to Rhoda. Terlahi says they will be sending out 16 personnel and would like them to be on the first flight out to get utility services fully restored. Our equipment, our materials, even our bucket trucks and our ugger is ready and standby to go there. Um, unfortunately, that one can't go on the plane. That will likely go on a, you know, um, carrier. Uh, we're told, though, unfortunately, that the carrier may not get there till next week because the waters are still rough. Saipan and Tinian did experience some auto trips during the typhoon, but Terlahi says there are no reports on any major damages to the feeders. If anything, it was, the, you know, high winds caused some transformers to pop and drop lines to fall. But those were immediately, we, we weren't on stand down completely. Our power crew was still able to go out and, and bring the power back on and or isolate the problem and then work on it as they could when the winds died down. Um, as of this morning, I think we turned on the last customer that um, has been without power. So I think Saipan is completely restored. Um, Tinian, uh, a couple of feeders went down. Um, it didn't come down to towards the end of the storm. Um, so it's, it was amazing for Tinian. We weren't getting any trouble calls at all. And then all of a sudden, you know, at the very end. CUC will continue to provide updates on the latest for Rhoda. People of Rhoda, I know they are antsy and they, you know, they've been through a lot and we feel them. We feel for them. We, we, we went through it during Typhoon U2 over here, but um, our hearts in Saipan are all with them. We're rooting for them and uh, we're very grateful to our, our solid and very uh, determined team in Rhoda to go out there despite the challenges with their equipments and stuff, they're getting the power and the water back on. And so I want to thank them and I want to thank the people of Rhoda for being patient with us. Coming up, cleanup operations on Saipan have already commenced. Stay tuned. Cycling is a great way to see the island and maintain a healthy lifestyle. To stay safe, here are a few things to remember. Make sure you can be seen. Wear bright clothing and make sure your bicycle has the required reflectors and lights. And of course, always wear an approved, proper fitting helmet. Always ride in a single file and with the flow of traffic. Help us make our island safer. Always follow the rules of the road and ride safely.
Get your goods here with care and attention with Micronesia Air Cargo Services. Max is all about connections, daily flights to and from Guam, four times a week to Rota, and bi-weekly flights to Tinian. We are connecting the Marianas. Perishable goods, Home Depot furniture and appliances, even live animals operating since 2013. Check out our Thursday special to Rota from Guam and Saipan. Call Max at 670-288-6227. If it fits, we'll take it. My doctor gave me the pills, so they must be safe, right? If taken exactly as prescribed, short-term use can be safe, but painkillers have real risk. Misusing an opioid painkiller can cause serious harm, including addiction and death, and misuse can happen quite easily. Make sure you never mix them with alcohol, antidepressants, sedatives, or sleep aids. And if you are prescribed an opioid, you need to tell your doctor about any other drugs, including herbal supplements that you are taking. It only takes a little to lose a lot. This project was supported by a grant from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation. Contents are solely the responsibility of CHCC and do not necessarily represent the official views of the CDC or the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. Cleanup operations on Saipan began as soon as the winds weren't as strong. The field operations team from the Saipan mayor's office were dispatched out into the villages on Thursday, clearing debris from along the road. Since the beginning, you know, when we received that there's a tropical, you know, cyclones within the area, I, you know, uh, fill up all my equipment on standby mode, you know, talk to my staff, you know, that uh, I need their assistant. Uh, there should be no thinking of time. You know, when I call you in, let's respond. So uh, that's what we did. Saipan Mayor Ramon R.B. Camacho says one of the most significant debris removal was along Tundoy Road in Chalankanoa. There's a big fallen tree in uh, Tundoy's Road in nighttime. So I dispatched my guys and they responded less than an hour to remove those uh, debris. Camacho says his team conducted an island-wide assessment and responded accordingly. Some like the Chalankija area, you know, uh, a family there, I think family of three, uh, there's a huge tree blocking their way out. So they respond that and they uh, remove those. Uh, Capitol Hill uh, area too, where Dr. Stern is staying. Uh, there's also a roadblock there, so they respond. There's a lot of, and, and right now they're clearing al along the road. All those uh, debris, you know, the coconut brands, we're taking it out. According to the mayor, it's important to get right at it for the safety of motorists. The importance of clearing the road is the access for the public, especially emergency vehicles. You know, uh, we know already that we have a lot of dialysis patients, you know, and we don't want them to get stuck in the middle of the road. So that's the reason why I make that thing priority. The Saipan Mayor's office also provided pre-typhoon services. Yes, I, I also, you know, I bring it out to the informing the public to uh, secure those loose materials, you know. And so uh, instead of, you know, securing it, they put it along the road. So when I see that, I tell my guys, let's extract those things out. Because I don't want to see those things flying during the typhoon. So those are the, the priority and, uh, you know, I cannot say no to that because we cannot put a price tag on a human being. So that's my priority. Mayor Camacho was among the CNMI multi-agency coordination team, which was composed of several government agencies and other organizations for the heavy weather briefing and planning and coordination activities. He says working together is critical. I just hope that everybody are safe in Rhoda. I know, you know, it's a very tough because there's no, uh, I think the water is back, but the uh, power is still out. But the uh, governor's uh, emergency response team, they're, they're up to par. I mean, they're fast respond as well as the FEMA. So, uh, working together is the best solution in solving these problems. You know, avoid as much as possible of pushing each other. You know, 
hug each other and let's accomplish the mission because we're here to serve the people. Crew members of the Saipan mayor's office will continue operations even after the typhoon has passed. There's no last day. It's an everyday clean day. The road accord remains closed. Judiciary facilities on Saipan and Tinian are now open. The Rota Centro and Justicia in Sinopolo will remain closed until further notice. This is in lieu of a Supreme Court order. As for facilities on Saipan and Tinian, regular businesses have resumed beginning today. On Friday, May 26, the Guma Justicia in Susupi, Cotentinian in San Jose, the Records Office at the Marianas Business Plaza, and the Law Revision Commission at the Jotun Center are open. All right, folks, don't go anywhere. We have sports up next. Need a new phone? Trade in now and get up to $500 off our best 5G devices. Trade in your older phone in any condition and step up to better savings and speeds only our 5G network can provide. Check out our website and catch up on the best mobile experience. Trade in now. Docomo Pacific. Better together. Half a day, Sinamai. Did you know that car crashes are the leading cause of death for children ages 1 to 13? In order to keep your children safe during a car crash, make sure you select the right type of car seat for their age and size. A rear-facing car seat should be used from birth to 12 months or up to 3 years old. Forward facing car seats are for children from 1 to 3 or up to 7 years old. Booster seats are for children from 4 to 7 or up to 12 years old. Seat belts are for children 8 to 12 years old or older. For a seat belt to fit properly, the lap belt must lie snugly across the upper thighs, not the stomach. The shoulder belt should lie snugly across the shoulder and chest and not across the neck or face. Do not move your child to the next car seat level until he or she reaches the top height and weight limit allowed by your car seat's manufacturer. Remember, your children are the most precious cargo when driving. Keep us safe and buckle us in. We depend on you. Thank you. At one of Saipan's beaches, this mother lays about a hundred eggs under the cover of darkness. She hides her nest as best she can and then slowly makes her way back to the ocean. The eggs hatch and the babies head for the sea where they will face a daily dose of danger. Just one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Those that do will one day lay their own eggs Sea turtles are protected under CNMI law. If you see one that is stranded or if you see illegal activity, call the hotline at 287-8537. Location, location, location. Office space on Capitol Hill, available now at the Hermosa Vista Business Park. With natural light and ocean views, it's the perfect place for creative professionals. So upgrade your life and your working environment. Schedule an exclusive showing now. Call us at 670-483-4750 or email hvsaipan at gmail.com. Buenos sports fans. Just before the typhoon, the top high school boys volleyballers went through an all-star practice week, which gave them a chance to play with and not always against their fellow all-stars. It was the best against the best, but the boys found themselves with new teammates for a Saturday showdown at Agape. Sean Davis. It's a way to recognize really good players 
that don't get recognized if you're not first or second place in the PSS system. So it was our way to try to give kudos to all the teams and the people that put the time in. Practice happened during the week at the MHS gym and then it was game time. They're all stars for a reason. They're all very talented and they all got a lot of skills developing. And also a very young team, not very many seniors. But um, yeah, the competition was great. I think that Coach Sean did an amazing job and we've all grown to learn these players through a lot of practice, a lot of hours of practice and a lot of um, seeing them throughout the season. So yeah, I think that both sides were very evenly spread across. It was just a matter of energy. Uh, we had practices. 14 hours of practice, but they didn't find out till Thursday, late night Thursday, who's, what team they're playing on. There was no advance notice. It was like a football draft. Just because we wanted them to see that with their skills, they could rise to the occasion and play even though it's with people they've never played before. The competition was really fun. The first two sets, we had it. And then the third set, the other team, team started to play really well and they are picking up their pace. But in the fourth, the last set, they were playing well as well, but we got it back in the end. So it was a good experience. The league was great. It's, uh, it's what I assumed it would be. I mean, all these boys are incredibly talented and I just wanted them to have fun and be able to play in a competitive match. And I'm glad that I went to at least four games. So that was really good. They all were great. But everybody really wants to be a hitter. All of the teams have hitters very easily. But the hardest part is deciding who are the setters, the specialty positions, the setters and the liberos. So we had the coaches submit um, players per team and we com combined all of the liberos and all of the setting position in which case we created I created a form that was a voting form that we sent out to all nine varsity coaches and we had collected all the nine varsity coaches and um, I just took the results of the Google form and then we kind of chose our top four setters and our top four liberos across the schools and um, we announced them and brought them all together to practice and we've just been working together and seeing how they do. I would say we all know each other's playing style because we played throughout the season, so that really helped. But our chemistry built it as we play together more. And especially in the final game, you can feel like each set, the chemistry was getting better. And I think our team had a little bit better chemistry than the other team, so I think that helped us win. Dylan Mister planning on attending Orange Coast College in the fall. Thank you to the coaches for coming out and the organizers of everything. It just I mean, all I have to do is show up. I'm sure there's a lot of background work that had to go into this. So thank you to all of them, like their meetings and everything, just putting the time into it. I'm very thankful. I hope the girls are ready because the high school girls are next. And they need to bring it just like the boys did. That's what we'd like to see. Golfers come north and practice your game at the Marianas Driving Range. New Year's local specials. 10-piece coupon books available for just $60. That's a $10 savings. Want to get really good? Come work on your swing every day for just $99 per month. It's our practice pass and you're going to love it. Grab your passes and go straight to the range. You can social distance and chip all at the same time and the views are free. Reserve now at MarianasTrekking.com. You can pay online. Open seven days a week. Hi, I'm Dre, one of the personal trainers here at Goat's Gym, and today we're going to be going over the leg press. Now I have here with me is Vince, and he's going to show you how to execute it properly in two different ways. A common mistake that you'll often see is leaving your hands free, either up here or on your lap. I strongly recommend you holding onto the sled 
and create that tension in the upper body, which then allows you to create more range of motion. So with his current uh, foot placement, he was feeling it on his legs, his quads. Now with a simple adjustment by placing his foot a little higher on the platform and his toes pointed out slightly, he's going to transfer that tension which was previously on his legs onto his hamstrings and glutes. Again, he's gonna grab onto the sled, creating that bracing effect up here. ASPN weather report, high surf warning and effect until 6 p.m. Saturday, high risk of recurrence through Sunday afternoon. For the rest of tonight, mostly cloudy scattered showers early in the afternoon, then scattered showers and a slight chance of thunderstorms after midnight southeast winds 15 to 20 miles per hour, lows around 77, and your chance of showers is at 50%. Your weekend forecast, partly sunny with scattered showers and a slight chance of thunderstorms, east wind 15 to 20 miles per hour, highs around 85, chance of showers is at 50%. Your marine forecast, Super Typhoon Mawar, will continue to move away from the area. A ridge to the north will remain nearly stationary through the period. And there you have it, folks. That is your Friday edition of the new sports and weather here in the Marianas. Thank you so much for watching the Channel 2 News. We hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday.